What's going on, everyone? It's RGB here again. Hope you're all doing great. So, in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the best PS3 emulator for Android devices. The APS3E emulator got a new build update based on 1.33 version. And this is the native PS3 emulator for Android devices that can already run many PS3 titles, depending on the device's performance speeds. And you already know about this emulator. This is ported based on the RPCS3 source code, optimized for Android platform. So anyways, without further ado, let get into the video. And also, for this emulator, you need one more main thing. We need a heart for this emulator. Means we need the PS3 firmware file. Currently 4.92 build is the latest. You just need to get this PS3 firmware update file, where we need to import this during the APS3E setup. And also, you need to get your favorite game ROM files, extract those files using this archiver. And then you can import and play those titles. So once everything is done, open the APS3E emulator. The setup process will be same as usual. Go to next step. Here import the PS3 firmware PUP file. Go to next. Select the ISO directory where you copied all the game files. Here I already created a separate folder for all the titles. Go to next. Here by default, select font file as from firmware. Now here you need to add GPU driver. If you are using Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 or lower, you need to add Turnip 25 driver. Or if you are using even low-end like Adreno 619 GPU, use the Turnip 24 driver. Currently, there's are no custom driver for 8 Elite to work PS3 titles. So it only uses system driver, same as the Mali GPU devices. Now go to next. We got a welcome screen here. And there we go. All the titles got import and these are ISO format titles. This emulator also supports other PS3 formats like the package or wrap. So simply import those titles as well. And refresh. That's it. Same, I'll also add more package-based titles. All right, it's done. Now let's quickly jump into settings. Go to core. And mostly I'll leave all these settings to default. Like the PPU decoder and PPU threads, LLVM compile threads or whatsoever. Now go to video. Here renderer is set to Vulkan. Set resolution to lowest 480p. Set frame limit to auto or 60 FPS. And if you are using low end, then choose 30. Disable the MSAA. Here shader mode is set to async shader recompiler. Set shader precision to low. Here enable write depth and read depth buffers. Here enable stretch to fit display. Enable frame skip if you are using a low end. And that's it. Go to Vulkan. And here, as I mentioned in the beginning, if you are using a custom GPU driver, then make sure to enable this option, Force Max Clocks of Adreno. And by default, here it uses my Adreno 830 GPU adapter as system driver. And finally, the performance overlay. If you want, you can enable this FPS meter. It's optional. And that's it. These are the recommended settings. And also, one more. Here, you can able to access to its options. Like you can delete game data, delete shaders cache. You can edit custom configuration for each game. You can even create a game shortcut to the home screen. You can view the game info, the name, version of the title, and the supported resolutions, and the sound format it uses. Show trophy info, and you can even manage the PPU cache to improve more performance during emulation. Let's go to key mappers, and it's same as usual. And if you want, you can enable vibrator for haptics. And let's go to about section. And here you can see the device's CPU and the GPU driver is configured to this emulator using the latest Adreno Vulkan 1.3 drivers. And you can view these extensions. Now let's go to update log. And here everything is in Chinese. So let's translate. And all right. And currently 1.33 build is latest. And they added display trophy info, fixed some keys and improved PPU compilation speeds. So anyway, let's begin with this title. Also, do follow the timestamps mentioned below in the description and the details. And for the first time, it takes a couple of minutes to compile all the PPU modules and the SPU. And for the first time you load the game, will lag a lot during the compilation process. You can see over here, still the shaders are compiling. But when you load this game for the second time, it will be normal and works fine and stable because the compiled data will get stored onto the SPU cache memory. I mean, for each level based on the games you play. So anyway, let's jump into the next one.
will kill you. Don't you have attention? He just robbed me! Hey, kid! A little help? Not my problem. Do the tutorial, you're really in trouble. Bar eight. And that's it for this video. And honestly, the performance is really great, to be honest. Like it's way better than before, which is even more playable with decent frame rates. Of course, it still needs to support more and more games, but the progress is solid from the APS-3E. So anyway, if this video helped you, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button for more tests. And thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.